let's have a look at question 35 in this video. So we have here 10 secretaries were selected at random from a large university. The typing speed measured the number of words per minute was recorded for each secretary on two different brands. So we have brand A and we have brand B. We have 10 secretaries. These are the data. Now we also know that the typing speeds are not normally distributed. We have the following hypothesis, which we're going to discuss a bit later. To test the hypothesis, a sign test is employed. Now, we have to perform the sign test and give the conclusion where the, whether the difference in speed between brand A and brand B is significant or not. Now, why do we have here a sign test and what does the sign test tell us? Because we do not have a normal distribution, because we do not have a normal distribution, we're not interested in the actual averages because the average is not going to be an accurate estimate of what we're trying to test. So because we do not have a normal distribution, we're testing whether the distributions are similar or not between brand A and brand B. So we're doing a test on distributions, a test on distributions. So what we're interested in is whether we will have similar distributions. Do we have similar values in the first group and in the second group without actually being interested whether the average, the mean of those uh, of those uh, distributions are equal because again the mean is not going to be an accurate estimate since the distribution itself is not normal maybe we have a skewed distribution to the right so we will have high several high values for the typing speed and that's gonna boost up our average so the average is not going to be an accurate estimate of what we're trying to test now when we test distributions what we're testing actually under the null hypothesis is that the median, the middle observation in the first distribution is equal to the middle observation of the second distribution. And under the alternative hypothesis is the opposite, so they are not equal. Now what does it mean to have similar medians? When we have similar medians, what we're trying to say that on average, on average, the differences between observations, so the differences between the distributions, between the distributions, are spread equally, are spread equally. In other words, sometimes on several, dis on several observations, on several groups or several combinations, we will have higher values for the brand A, and in other cases, we'll have higher values for the, grand for the, for the brand B. Now, what does it say us? It tells us that on average, the proportion of positive differences is going to be around 50% and the proportion of negative differences is going to be also around 50%. So in other words, another way of writing the hypothesis of the sign test is whether the proportion of positive differences, we assume that the P stays for the positive differences, is going to be 50% and under the alternative is whether that is not the case. So that's not going to be 50%. Now, how do we test that? Because we're testing positive and negative differences, we're using a binomial distribution. So with a binomial distribution, with a binomial distribution from the, from the syllable by, which is double, which is positive difference, positive difference and negative difference. So in this case, the binomial distribution is going to show us the probability of having the positive differences that we have by chance. Now let's count how many positive and negative differences we actually have. If we take the difference between A and B, so we subtract the speed between the brand A and brand B, let's see what are going to be the differences, negative or positive. Remember again, we're not interested in the values, just the, the size, the direction, the direction of the differences. So 72 minus 74 is a negative difference, 80 minus 86, negative difference, 68 minus 72, negative difference, 74 minus 70, positive difference, 84 minus 85, negative difference, 75 minus 73, positive difference, 70 minus 72, negative difference, 63 minus 65, negative difference, 76 minus 79, negative difference, 62 minus 64, another negative difference. So out of all these 10 combinations, out of all these 10 sets of typing speeds between brand A and brand D B, we have two negative, uh, sorry, two positive differences and eight negative differences. When we're checking for the binomial test, what we're looking for is how likely is that these two positive differences, at most two positive differences, 
happen by chance because it's very unlikely to have positive difference. The pattern goes to have negative differ differences. So we want to know if at least these two positive differences have a significant meaning. We want to know if they happen by chance or not. So that's what the binomial distribution is going to tell us. So let's write it here below. We're checking the probability of having at most two positive differences by chance, given that we have a sample size of 10 and our proportion under the null hypothesis, the proportion that we would expect to have is equal to 0 0.5. We would expect a 50-50 distribution of positive and negative differences. Now the binomial distribution is in the table itself. I think it's called table C with the binomial distribution. And the values are just given. We have to look for the probability that x is equal to 0, given that we have 10 observations and a 0 0.5 proportion, plus the probability that x equals to 1, plus the probability that x equals to 2. Now if we work out the math by looking in the table, we would have the following values. We would have we would have 0 0.0439 plus 0 0.0098 plus 0 .0 0 0.0010. So if we add up all of it, it's going to be 0 .0, 0 0.0547. And what we can see is that this value, this value is quite high. So the probability that these differences happen by chance is quite high. It's above 5%. And we're testing the sign test at the significance level of 5%, meaning that we exceed the level, the probability that which we allow for a result to happen by chance. So this is our p-value, in other words, and our p-value is greater than our significance level of 5%, meaning that we do not reject the null hypothesis. So even though we only have two positive differences, it's not enough evidence, so not enough evidence, not enough evidence that the typing speeds, that the typing speeds differ significantly. Typing speeds differ significantly. And that's it. If we have a look at the answer key, they say that they don't provide enough evidence. Indeed, they don't provide enough evidence for us to reject the hypothesis. So the answer is true and we are done.